Can you hear me? <laughs> All the better to hear you. <laughs> I can hear you. What? All what? right. Uh, I think we can hear you. What? Maybe. All right. Okay. Okay. We're done now. We have an ear. Okay, so this is one of the last models you'll have to look at in 244. Yeah. Awesome. So with the ear, we've divided it into three major areas, the outer, the middle, and then the inner ear, which is actually going to be inside the bones. So the outer ear, most of you are probably familiar with. You may have pierced it before. Uh, the external is going to contain the oracle, or may we call it the pinna of the ear the part that helps catch our sound waves. Now it's going to angle the sound waves into the external auditory meatus, uh, uh, which is going to, what do you got there? What are you um, pushing I'm, on? I'm cleaning, I'm cleaning my ear with well, a Q-tip. What are you doing that for? Well, because I want to get this white earwax out, and, and all I'm doing is pushing it onto the eardrum. That looks like it might hurt. Yeah, yeah. How so, does that make you actually hear better? What? Exactly. What? Yeah. I can't when when I jam it in there. So, mmm, earwax. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the doctor now and, and remove remove removing the earwax. Oh, oh there it fell goes. right out. Oh boy. Yeah, so oh, so much better. I think what Karina is trying to tell you is you shouldn't use Q-tips. It's not a really good thing to do. It shoves your EORX in. It actually scratches your entire canal and causes some problems. So puts a lot of pressure on your tympanic. Membrane. And then you can't hear you any can't better. Hear anything. Right? So when you put those ear iPod buds into your ear, not really a good that thing. Is, that's pretty bad for your ear. It's pretty bad. All right. So once we get to the end of the external auditory meatus, we are going to hit the tympanic membrane. Now this is going to kind of literally act like a drum, which is why we call an eardrum it is going to have the sound waves hit it and then it will vibrate and it's going to transfer that vibration into our middle ear the middle ear is going to get whacked at three specific teeny tiny little bones yep. smallest bones in your body uh, the malleus the incus and the stapes okay, these are so like little synovio joints too you got it so if we zoom so malleus incus and the stapes so in the middle ear there, it's going to be filled with air. Okay? So the vibration is just going to get transferred from the tympanic membrane to those bones and will move into the inner ear. So the air portion of this needs to be equalized because the tympanic membrane isn't going to do that for us. So we have an auditory tube that's going to connect the middle ear down to our nasal passage which is why your ears pop when you fly in airplanes or drive over hills and why we get really awful ear infections mm -hmm. occasionally. Mm -hmm. um, and I think at the top portion of that middle ear, we have a little thing we had removed, which is going to be the mastoid entrum, which is kind of the roof of that middle ear. So as we move into the inner ear, the stapes, that third bone, little better angle on it there that is going to be touching the inner ear and that little crease right there that Karine's drawing on is the oval window this is kind of the end of the middle ear beginning of the middle ear where we're going to transfer that it's beginning vibration. of the inner, the beginning in, of the inner, inner ear. ear inner ear inner ear that's okay and we will transfer that vibration into the fluid of the inner ear so the oval window is going to transfer that into the vestibule and the cochlea, and then the semicircular canals, which will pop through the bony labyrinth. Yes. So if we go here from the above shot, hey, you can see that the bony labyrinth is basically just the maze inside our temporal bone of the cochlea, the vestibule, and the semicircular canals. Now we can also see inside the cochlea, let me open it up, it's a little hard to open, the membranous labyrinth, and also inside the cochlea we would have the spiral organ, which is kind of harder to see on this guy here. And I think the last thing I need is the vestibular cochlear nerve right there at the back, which is going to take signals for both hearing and balance into the brain. Yep. Do we have everything? We have everything. Are you sure I didn't like skip anything? I don't think so. The other thing is, is that students, you'll have to make sure that you read through the rest of your lab. Your instructor will go over all those remaining terms in the boxes yeah, with so you. So if we, you know, look at that lab book over here, all these 
these and things. Those are not going to be able to be seen on the models as well. So those are something you'll have to talk about with physiology and on your lecture. All right, I think we're done with the ear. Sounds great. All right. Ha.